broadcasting live four days a week worldwide from the sunny beaches of Southern California. This is ExtremeHealthRadio.com. Hi, this is the Health Ranger Mike Adams from NaturalNews.com, and I'm listening to Justin and Kate on Extreme Health Radio. Tune in every day for awesome shows that will empower you to change your life. Wake up your immune system to attack harmful invaders that don't belong in your body. Visit C-A-R-N-I-V-O-R-A dot com or call 1-866-VENUS-FLY today. Increase brain health and improve focus, memory, clarity, and mood with BioAge Superfood. Get 10% off your order using coupon code J-U-S-T-I-N at ExtremeHealthRadio.com slash BioAge. have the crescendo of the music that comes in and gets still a little jig here in the studio. Jig and jig and throwing back a smoothie. Throwing back a little smoothie. Should have done that before. Sorry, I didn't know you were going to come in so abruptly. <laughs> so abruptly. <laughs> I like your little jig though. That was hey, nice. Hey, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, gets, your, gets you in a happy mood to start a beautiful Thursday morning here in Southern California. <laughs> That's right. That's right. The sun is out. The sun is shining. And we're so gonna we're some, happy. We're going to have some fun today with Mr. Daniel Vitale. We'll Woo-hoo. introduce him in just a second. Uh, this is episode 299, is that correct? Yep, you got it. 299. Okay, we broadcast live four days a week on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. So if you guys ever want to join the chat room and listen to us maybe while you're at work or while you're driving, you can go to extremehealthradio.com forward slash live and you can join the chat room and um, have a little party with the people. In it's there. so fun in there. A little fiesta. I highly recommend joining the chat room. Yeah. Come time. join us. Come join us. 9 a.m. Pacific. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, so uh, that would be a lot of fun. If you guys would like to support the show, please check out our sponsors, BioAge Superfood. We had Roland Thomas on the show a while back, and that was awesome. And Carnivora is just another amazing product we got originally turned on to by Ty Bollinger. Boosts your immune system. Good stuff. And um, you can also go through our link if, as well if you want to do that on Amazon, extremehealthradio.com forward slash Amazon. And you can um, support the show that way by buying... Some awesome on products. Yeah. yeah. So this is episode 299, and we have Daniel Vitalis today. And um, I wanted to invite him on because he is just a really prolific guy, doing some great things out in the world. And um, and what I wanted to do is shift the focus a little bit in today's show. I wanted to talk about business and and uh, and health and um, and people starting their own businesses and people starting ventures, perhaps online or offline, that helps the world in a conscious way. Where you can also make money because we all need to pay our bills and we need to live. Yeah, we need to and live. We need to live well. We need to treat our bodies right and be able to have the funds to treat our bodies properly. And I think Daniel is a stunning vision of that, doing yes. just that. Yes, and I tell you, for us, it's a it's a huge difference between having to uh, go to an office every day and be under the gun and stress of that kind of a lifestyle, uh, and having the freedom and flexibility to be able to take care of yourself. If we want to do an enema in the middle of the day, we can do that. Yeah. Or a sauna or anything like yeah, that, yeah. right? So we want to invite Daniel. He's the uh, f- the founder of SirThrival.com. His website is DanielVitalis.com, where you can find out about all the different programs he's running and different speaking engagements, as well as Find the Spring. And as many of you know, all of you know, I'm sure, he's the leading health motivator, nutritionist, herbalist, educator, and creator of DanielVitalis.com. So Teaches people all over the world, and I don't have to tell you guys this. You guys know and love Daniel Vitale. So yeah, thanks, is, Daniel. Is that all he does? <laughs> <laughs> that's all I do, guys. That's, that's me in a nutshell. That's it, right? Uh, Around the world. So <laughs> you are, you're coming to California pretty soon, I hear. Well, yeah, I've got the Bulletproof uh, Exec Conference coming up. I think that's the 26th, 27th, and 28th of September. Pretty excited to be invited to that. It's such a cool community. So, um, yeah, I'll be out there speaking. I think uh, my speaking engagement will be on that Friday, the 26th. That is so cool. So, tell me a a little bit about the Bulletproof Executive. I've heard about the Bulletproof Coffee. Is it the same thing? Same guy? Well, yeah, I think Bulletproof Coffee is just a small aspect of what Dave does. Um, he's really one of the most prolific sort of, I guess, one of the thought leaders in the biohacking community. Mm. And uh, it, it's really an interesting thing to kind of 
you know, as I'm sort of a thought leader in the rewilding community, coming together with these guys who are doing this, the guys and women who are doing this thing, um, that word guys is so funny, right? There's like certain, <laughs> we kind of apply it to women. It's sort of, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. Anyway. Huh? Um, so anyway, I think you know what I mean. They're, they're into this idea of biohacking, which is, I think sometimes a little bit of a strange idea, this idea of kind of looking at the human body like a computer and figuring out how to hack the system. Uh -huh. But at the same time, I mean, we're definitely allies on the same side. So I got to just do his podcast, which is which is huge and um, big community of people there. And uh, and yeah, get to go out there and speak. But yeah, they do the Bulletproof Coffee, but they do quite a bit of other stuff too. That's just sort of one of the things they're really known for. That's so cool. That is so awesome. And um so that happens uh, for those people that are out in California. Happens in April, or no? I'm sorry, <laughs> September. September. Yeah, September, wow. September 26th to the 28th. Okay. Where is it located, Daniel? Oh, that's a great question. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be finding that out. Oh, I, I got it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure. Somewhere in the LA area, but I don't actually know the area that well. So. Gotcha. That's awesome. That's exciting. Yeah, that's exciting. So, um, so with your company, Sir Thrival, um, how long have you had that? How, when did you start Sir Thrival? We started it, this is our, we just celebrated our fifth year in business, which feels good. You know, there's sort of that, that's sort of the magic mark, right? Because I always measure whether small businesses make it past that five-year mark. So we're five years in, uh, doing great, really thriving. Um, the, the company really came about probably about two years after I started public speaking. So I sort of began with that um, mm -hmm. and then built the company sort of as I continued to do that. And that's really been one of my main focuses for the last five years. But I got to say, now I'm at this really nice point where I'm really able to, and, I, and a lot of the people listening, if you've been following my work any amount of time, you've probably noticed since January, I've really been putting out a lot more content and that's because I finally have gotten to a place with Sir Thrival where I, my focus can go back onto my personal work, um, my ministry, I guess you could call it, mm -hmm. uh, because the company is at that stable, sort of streamlined place or getting there at least. So you did two years of public speaking before you started Sir Thrival. And then uh, for those that don't know, you were into health for many, many years before you even started doing public speaking. You kind of just immersed yourself right in all the literature and just started doing all kinds of at experiments at a really young age right yeah yeah i did i mean my my path and journey through this i think is a is a is a slightly alternative one and i want to back up and say when i give these date ranges my brain just does not work on gregarian calendar metrics <laughs> so so i'm estimating here but yeah most of my uh, my adult life and even you know into my teenage life i've been deeply, deeply interested in physical health and not just physical health, but personal development. You know, when I was, um, I, I grew up in a, in a fairly low rung of the socioeconomic ladder of slavery. So yeah. I, I was surrounded by people who, who didn't really have much ambition and didn't have much desire to really understand themselves, no less develop themselves. And, you know, early on, I didn't have a lot of mentors that I could really look to in that way. And so I started going, I remember going to my public library. This is when cassette tapes were in, you know, and you'd have the Walkman. Oh, yeah, I love that. Right? And I was, a, I was a walker, you know. <laughs> so I would, uh, I would get these tapes by Anthony Robbins because they had them at my, my library, a big, you know, one of his big anthologies. Uh-huh. And I would listen to these and some of the other guys, too, who were sort of the early uh, pioneers in that world of personal development, you know, when that was back when the public speakers were doing their circuit and they were putting yeah. out those, you know, self-help cassettes. Les Brown. And, uh, what's that? Les oh, yeah. Brown and all that. I, I didn't ever listen to, I don't remember him, but I remember Zig Ziglar and yeah. just, you know, all these different characters. Anyway, I, uh, yeah, so I would listen primarily to Anthony Robbins. He really lit me up. And, um, and so from early on, I was just always interested in personal development and health has just always been one, one slice of the, of the pie of, of, you know, personal development. So mm -hmm. to me, it seems really pointless to develop, you know, yourself just intellectually, just emotionally, just psychologically. Uh, also, we need to develop ourselves physically and health is a big part of that. So, so it's not been my only interest, but it's been a big interest of mine. And I really got into it from the personal development world. And so that was about when I was age 15 or 16. And, you know, I've been at it really since then. You know, it's funny you said that because I used to do the exact same thing. We have a little library here in town and I'd go and I'd get different to books on tape or I'd find Anthony Robbins, you know, success within or whatever those things were. And I, I had the cassette tapes and all that stuff. I used to do the same thing. That's uh, that's amazing. I think it's important, isn't it? To, to uh, develop that side of yourself before you start figuring out what you want to do as far as a business and, 
You got to figure out who you are first, don't you? Uh, yeah, thank you. So a couple, I think these are foundational caveats that I think are really important that we hit on. And that's that, and again, I'm not suggesting anyone needs to follow in my footsteps at all. I think we all have our own alternative path. But one thing I see a lot of people doing is they're figuring out, I need to start a business or I want to start a business. And then they get into a field that maybe they don't have a lot of time and expertise in. Mm-hmm. And that works for a time, but I don't think that's the long-term sustainable strategy. So for me, it was I started a business in a field that I had developed a significant amount of expertise in. So there's that thing, there's a sort of that meme going around now about the 10,000 hours or the 10 years that you need to develop mastery in an area. Mm -hmm. And I really have put that time in and put that time in before I started my company. And I think that that adds a level of depth, sincerity, authenticity, and sort of trust. Um, it, you know, our company just has a reputation of, of excellence because we are founded in that, that, 10,000 hours of that expertise Mm -hmm. as opposed to somebody who sort of starts up a company but doesn't really know much about the field they're in and then learns as they go. Mm -hmm. And that's another strategy and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But we, yeah, we come from a place of having really established ourselves and the information first and I think that's been part of our success. Mm -hmm. So Daniel, even though you had all that background and you you became a master of this going into the business, were you still scared of the business aspect part of it? I mean, were you afraid of failing or did you just know it was going to work because you felt so confident in who you were at that point? Oh, the old fear of success. Ah. I, you know, I, I, <laughs> I want to back up first and say, <clears throat> before you know, any of that, I didn't ever have a desire to go into business. Hmm, really? Um, I've never been attracted to business. I, I don't have um, naturally a strong entrepreneurial, mm, I, not, not the way a lot of people I know do. I don't have a business background. I didn't go to school for business. In fact, guys, I didn't go to high school. So... You know, I didn't really get that indoctrination. And th- this, you know, for anybody who really delves deep into what I do, particularly people who read the last issue of my magazine, which came out last week, um, called The Operant Condition, you'll get a sense of where I, how I actually feel about capitalism. And so I want to, I want to, before we go into this, I have a lot of great things to say about working for yourself and about having your own company. Mm-hmm. But I want to be really, really emphatically clear here that I do not believe in capitalism nor any other ism. And I don't think that this idea of capitalism is healthy or sustainable. I think it's a form of servitude and slavery. And I think a lot of us, if we had the option for a natural life, we wouldn't participate in this game. I mean, this is a casino game. And we're, we're all talking about, yeah, like you guys said in the beginning, we need money to live this lifestyle. But what we're really calling money are Federal Reserve debt notes. Right, and right. they're based on debt. And they're, they're fiat currency. They're not based on anything real. It's a, it's a house of cards. And most of us would like a different level of freedom, right? It would be nice to barter with you guys, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Not have, have, have an intermediary. So it's sort of like, it's like when you get convinced you can't go directly to your higher power, but you need an intermediary that you have to go talk to, and then he'll go talk to your God for you. Right, mm-hmm. right. Right? It's like we can't do exchange between each other. We have to exchange with the Federal Reserve who then exchanges with you. Exactly. Right, So I don't really want to support that system. And I want to say a couple things about it. One is it's called capitalism, which is the ism of the head. Capita is Latin. It means head. And it's a reference to counting the head of cattle. So there was a time where cattle was like money, right? When agriculture was new and city states were first developing. And there was this idea that the more cattle you had, the wealthier you were. And we counted the capital the ca- the sorry the the cattle per capita or per head mm. now we count people per capita as well and that's because this is sort of a system that uses human beings as a labor force mm-hmm. and so the more people or head of cattle or life forms you control the wealthier you are i don't think most of us really feel good about that that's just a system we were born into now we're here and we're going to make it work for us but I just want to be clear going into this that the s- things that I say are not because I believe that the system's great. I'm just making it work for me as best as I can. Yeah, exactly. Does that makes sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So um, so when did well, you, start- you know, let me let me add to that real quickly yeah. here. I want to add this other piece. There, this I go deeply into this in my last dispatch, but. Uh, and you can find that on DanielVitalis.com if you're interested in what I'm talking about here. But, but let's talk for a minute about this word employ. It's a really interesting one because 
it's made of two parts, M and ploy. And M means to go into a state of. Mm -hmm. And ploy means a cunningly devised tactic um, designed to gain advantage over you. And you guys can just look this up on your dictionary. It's even, you know, even on your computer dictionary. So employ means to go into a state uh, where you, there's a cunning, deceitful plan being used to leverage you to someone's advantage. Right. And an employer is playing the ploy on you, and the employee is having the ploy played on them. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, work really hard, you can become a man-ager of other people, right? So the, mm -hmm. an ager of man, somebody who becomes old through the process of controlling people, a man ager. And when you're done, you can retire, which is to become tired, exhausted, or bored again. <laughs> so we're in a really funny system that's designed to exploit us. And most of us are trying now to figure out as we become more conscious, we become more healthy, the sleep falls from our eyes, right? When we start to feel good in our bodies. It's like, hey, wait a second. I need a livelihood that feels... Like that supports what I'm doing and not one where I feel like this slave where at the end all I get to do is be tired again, retire. It's mm -hmm. like silly, right? So, so most of us are looking for an alternative path and that's what was happening for me and that's what led me to start my own company. But again, I just want to be clear. I am working within the confines of a system that's sort of by nature exploits people. Um, and I'm simply an employee of myself now. So I now play the scheme sort of on yeah, myself. You sort of play, yeah, play it on yourself. Did you have um, anybody in your family that that uh, did similar things, or, or is no, this, not at no? all, really. So I, you know, like I said, the the world that I come out of, there wasn't really many people reaching for that. So I, I think this has been a benefit for me, but it's also been a detriment to me. One, the benefit is that I come into business with a really fresh perspective so that I can run a new paradigm business because I don't come to it thinking this is how it's supposed to be. This is how they taught me in school. This is how other companies work. Mm -hmm. So I've built a company in a very uh, changing environment built on strategies that came from my own personal experience, not from anything that I brought to the table already. Mm -hmm. However, that said, you know, there's times where I can see the real benefits of understanding businesses from a more traditional perspective. And so, so there's times, I think mostly it's been a benefit my company is very different than most of the companies that are sort of have a more traditional background. Um, but I didn't learn from anybody else. I sort of made it up as I went. And um, like I said, there's been, there's been two sides to that story, but mostly that's been really beneficial to me. And with your employees, do they work um, in a central location like a traditional business or do you or can they work different places or how does that work for you? Yeah, that's a great question. So going into a business and I want to say this to anybody who's thinking of starting a business, you want to set this up for to maximize the you want the lifestyle you want built into your company from the beginning. Right, you don't want to like start a company that's actually got you doing something that's not how you want to live your life, yeah. and then hope later you can fix that. Or change now, it, I'm yeah. I've always been semi nomadic. That's sort of how I like to live. I live my life with bags packed, with a posture of leaving. I love to be able to travel, uh -huh. and so it was really important to me from the beginning that I had a company that not only supported my travel, but that didn't require that I was anywhere. Going back to what you just said, I don't like to call my staff employees because I don't want to be the employer, which is the person playing the ploy on them. And I don't want them to feel like they're having a ploy played on them. So I like to, just part of our company's culture, we refer to everybody as our staff. And our staff is completely non-local, which means that everybody works from wherever they want to work. So the only thing that anybody in Sir Thrival needs in order to do their job is, you know, they need a computer that can access the internet um, and whatever sort of little amendments to that they need. But nobody works in a central location, so we are all non-local. Um, I have mo a lot of my staff is in Maine, but um, but my assistant Jessica, she who I like to call my God assistant, mm -hmm. she uh, works um, outside the state, as does uh, the person who manages my wholesale. So they are not with us. And so they meet with us via Skype. And so so sometimes, you know, we all meet via Skype and sometimes we get together, whoever can get together locally, and then we'll bring them in via Skype. So they're sort of talking heads on the screen. Um, but that allows everybody, and that's really important to me, that everybody gets to to share in the lifestyle that I've made for myself. And I think this is a really important piece. And it might sound like, oh, yeah, that's obvious, but I know a lot of companies built by people like me, you know, pundits mm -hmm. who, who <laughs> get to live a certain lifestyle, but their staff is, is working like slaves. And I don't, I don't like that. So, 
So for me, I want to make sure everybody can be home when they want to be home. They can travel when they want to travel. As long as they accomplish what needs to be accomplished, they can be anywhere they want. And that's a part of the new paradigm of business, I think. Um, we tried actually for a couple of years to have, we, we for, a, for a year, we rented a beautiful office space. And what happened was we didn't use it. <laughs> Just sort of <laughs> sat there because no one ever wanted to be there. Yeah. It's nice to work with each other, but but not to have to be stuck in a place. Yeah. Um, and you can just see how that kind of cubicle thing starts to develop. So, so this way, everybody's got as much freedom as the current business world allows them to have. And that's really important to me. I love that. I love that. We're going to take a little bit of a break right now. But I want to ask you, uh, along the lines of this uh, particular line of thinking, about your thoughts about companies like Google and mm-hmm. all these companies that are setting up these strange environments so their employees can go work out and have baby care and all this kind of stuff. So... I'm Basically, live at the office. Live at the office. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's kind of, it's so kind of gonna have an idea of what you're going to say to that, but uh, we're going to tackle that after the break. We're with Daniel Vitalis, and this is an awesome show, episode 299. If you guys would like to join us four days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific, you can check out the live shows there as well as the chat room, and we'll be right back right after this break. I wanted to tell you about this really powerful and unique product called the Q Laser. Did you know there's over 2,500 peer-reviewed clinical research studies showing the benefits of low-level laser therapy on the body? We had Dr. Larry Lytle on episode 165 talking all about it. Dr. Lytle, what is the Q Laser? The Q Laser is a light delivering device, handheld, rechargeable, that is for lay people and professionals that works at the cell level of the body to restore energy. Since the body is all composed of cells and the cells are composed of atoms, it's good for any and everything in the body. It is especially beneficial for injuries. It will reduce swelling and inflammation before your eyes. Literally, you can have a sprained ankle and fly the laser. and Within 30 minutes, you can see that the swelling in the ankle has been reduced. Since all disease is inflammatory, you can assume that the same process is working if you have some type of intestinal problem. We have pictures of using a light, a heat instrument to diagnose the intestinal inflammation. We can show that that intestinal inflammation is pretty much gone within three minutes using the Q1000 laser. It's the number one tool in your medicine cabinet. I have a saying, never leave home without your laser. I have had three serious burns, and each time I had my laser with me, I applied the laser immediately after I had the burn. I never even blistered. Kate and I don't want to be without ours. We've worked out a special deal with Dr. Lytle for all of our listeners. If you'd like to learn more about how the Q laser can dramatically improve your health, go to extremehealthradio.com slash laser. 100% 100% listener supported. Extreme Health Radio. Opening minds and transforming lives worldwide. worldwide. Don't forget to join our thriving community for health tips, inspiration, and show updates at extremehealthradio.com slash Facebook. So it's funny, I'm talking about all of this stuff and then running an ad for commercials, and that's so ironic. <laughs> but I feel like Daniel's the same way. You know, we're entrapped in this capitalistic system, and uh, you know, we're doing the best with what we can. I just want to let everybody know, too, and I say this a lot on our show, is that uh, you don't need any of these products that we talk about on our show, uh, the products that 
I like the sauna and the laser and um, all of these things. Um, I just want to be upfront and forthright with everyone. They are amazing products, and we love them, take them, and use them, as well as the, pro- the products from Sir Thrival and everywhere else. But you don't need any of these products to be healthy. I mean, mm. these are you can be healthy uh, on your own. These products just seem to enhance. En- enhance, you know, maybe speed the process up a little bit. But so I just want to let everybody know that. Yeah, I just I just think that that's important to say because a lot of times people get their mind fixated on some sort of product but when in fact they can just sort of look within and do practices that are free like meditation, go for a walk, you know, go in yeah. nature. Uh, you don't have to be, have any of these things to be healthy. Do some Tai Chi in the park. Yeah, some Tai Chi in the park. There you yep. Go. So this is episode 299 with Mr. Daniel Vitalis from SirThrival.com and DanielVitalis.com if you want to sign up to his newsletter list and get those dispatches uh, four times a year and uh, all kinds of awesome st- stuff. Excuse me. Uh, you can find out where he's speaking and, and uh, all that good stuff. So that's all at DanielVitalis.com. So make sure to check that out. And so, Daniel, I wanted to ask you about that whole thing with them. Um, I've been seeing this more and more lately with places like Google and uh, these big companies, eBay, where they make it so easy for you to just bring your child there and spend basically all day there. (laughs) Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Neo-feudalism. I know. It's nuts. You know, so, so, I mean, I I just, I love to to get in there when something's taboo, right? And there's a lot of things that are taboo right now to talk about when it comes to work and technology. It's like people just want to, like, it's like, come on, dude, you're raining on our parade. And everybody's like, I, what I hear so much is like, it's getting so much better. And don't you think we can have this a beautiful merger of technology and nature? And, yeah. and can't you see all this stuff? It looks like that's such an improvement. Wow, like Google, you guys are so great making it so good for your staff. And geez, you guys have had David Wolf there to speak. And you, you just, you offer organic food in the kitchen. <laughs> like, it's so great, right? right? It's all so good. Um, and that's like, I, I, you know, ah, geez, this is tough. I don't want to rain on the parade, but I'm going to a little bit. And that's like saying, isn't it great how farms now aren't, you know, there's free range grass fed farms now where the cows get to free range their whole lives on grass. Yeah, that's way better. But let's not forget what the end of that story is. Hmm. Right. Cow, cows becoming beef. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Right. This is what this is, is now. Hum- basically, and again, I wrote about this in my last dispatch in, a, in an article called A Cradle of Civilization, and I explored the oldest archaeological um, Neolithic, I'm oh, sorry, um, megalithic site, uh, a place called Gobekli Tepe, where this all began, where it all began, where mm-hmm. the first human employees were building these stone circles, and why agriculture was f- initiated, why the first humans stopped farming, I mean, sorry, stopped hunting and gathering and started farming. And essentially, it was to feed a workforce, it was to feed a slave force. Now, this has been going on for 6,000 years, and the systems of human slavery have gotten smarter and smarter. So where we're at now is this place where, hey, if you're going to have to work for somebody else and not get to just live a free life, well, we might as well make that as comfortable as possible because you'll have less desire to resist it. Mm-hmm way less desire to resist it. Like if you're a free-range chicken, you're going to feel less resistant than if you're in a cage. Mm -hmm. If you're a free-range cow on pasture, you're going to have less resistance than if you're on a CAFO. And if you're a human being where you go into an office where there's good food and friends and you're able to really kind of have a lot more, like less structure and more freedom, then you're going to be more productive. So what employers are realizing is that their employees are more productive if they're given more freedom and they're allowed to do jobs that they feel they have strengths for rather than jobs that they don't feel really fit for. Mm -hmm. So in a way, that's really great. Now, this idea of basically being able to live at your job and be able to bring your kid to your job, what this is is called, it's neo-feudalism. So in feudalism, you have a lord and the Lord provides lands for you, and you work on that land to produce for him, and you keep what's left over, right? Mm -hmm. This is what's going on, but we've flipped it around a little bit so that you can basically, yeah, you're under Google's wing, right? Google becomes your Lord, and you become a serf in the serfdom of Google, Mm -hmm. and they provide and protect you, you know, they provide for you and protect you, and they offer you all of these benefits, and in exchange, you give your life to serve their transhuman agenda. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's great, right? As Google creates a sort of structure around us that more and more owns our lives and owns our data and knows more about us than we know about ourselves um, and, and 
you know, basically spies on our information. We then serve them and we bring our children there and they feed us and house us and they provide for us almost like the way the military does for their people. Mm -hmm. And um, in exchange, we further their agenda and make them more and more powerful. So that's neo-feudalism. And it looks, by putting a nice bow on the outside, it looks so good. Mm -hmm. So it's very similar to BP, right? BP really figured out how to use sacred geometry in a, in a gr- nice shades of green for their gas stations. Mm-hmm. And so you drive by and you see that sort of floral 12-pointed star and you see that nice, those green colors and you feel like, oh, that's finally gas stations are cleaning up their act. No, they've just changed the color scheme. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the same, same thing going on. So, you know, I think we have to be really, really careful and we have, to, we have to keep our wits about us and we have to be discerning. And that's getting harder and harder because people are getting more and more dopamine addicted mm-hmm. and, and less and less discerning. So it takes clear headedness right now. Now. Um, I think it's a great direction to see people being given more freedom, but let's not forget what this actually is. Yeah, yeah, it's a good perspective on that. And it's funny because Kate and I were talking the other day. Uh, it's just really strange how it, it seems as if uh, in the world today there's less and less options in terms of um, if you want to get a job and go and work for somebody. Um, you know, there's so many issues with, you know, if, if I were to go work for Google, if I had some skill that they required and they, they could use, you know, I would feel morally like I wouldn't want to do that. And it seems like <laughs> with so many, empl- em- I don't want to say employers, but with so many businesses out there, if you really want to live a conscious life, that's, I mean, it's, it's just difficult, isn't it, to find a company or business that has your sort of uh, morals and things like that, doesn't it? Right. And so now more than ever, it's easy to work for ourselves. That's one of the, one of the things that I've watched in the, since I started my company even. And, you know, let's be clear. Business is, is spelled busyness. We pronounce it business, but it's busyness, and that's what it is. I mean, it's not like I certainly. I mean, okay, I'm happy. I'm working right now, right? This is work for me, uh-huh. and I love what I get to do. I really do love my job most ways. I'm currently naked as I have this conversation. <laughs> the only thing I'm wearing is a headset, and I'm in the sun out in my own yard, uh, that's uh, the best lying, thing lying spread, spread eagle. While we talk about this, <laughs> that's tanning, you know, keep getting rid of any possibility of tan lines. So. <laughs> I feel very blessed in that way. Now, I'm having this conversation, though, on a device that was made by Chinese slave labor, Mm -hmm. right? And so this is one thing I want to point out. Now, it's getting easier for us in the privileged part of the world to start our businesses. And it feels like, especially where you guys are, because in California, sort of the epicenter of free-range human farming Mm -hmm. uh, for the states, right? So people are freer there probably than anywhere, you know, there's a sense when I go to California of like, that's where the cutting edge, that's where, that's what's shaping, that culture is shaping the culture that emanates back out to the rest of the states. And so there, there's this sense of, oh my gosh, we are also free. Everybody can just kind of do what they want. Let's not forget this is built on the backs of slavery. Like everything civilization has ever done, it's been built on the backs of slaves, right? So when even when we see ancient civilizations, we think, wow, it's so cool they built those pyramids. Like, as if the people that built those pyramids did so willfully. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Like, who built those pyramids? Right? Like, that's like, what's something I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> right? Well, yeah. yeah, but really, no, you're trying to figure out who oversaw the building right, right. of the pyramids. Make the distinction there. The pe- we know who built the pyramids. Slaves built the pyramids. Like, we know who built the railroads here, right? Mm-hmm. We, it wasn't, you know, the people who oversaw that. Right. We know who built the plantations here, not those founding fathers who oversaw it that's a huge distinction so there's this thing going on now where we're all starting our businesses on our little home devices our computers our handheld devices we're all starting our businesses but if you look beneath the surface you see that that slaves in other countries are building this stuff Mm -hmm. so there's that saying like none of us are free when others are enslaved and i think that's important that we not have these illusions that oh my god the iphone allows me to just do this so i'm so free it's like yeah well you are here but (laughs) the whole world's not that way and that's a really important piece here and i think we need to keep that in perspective because it's easy to lose sight of that let's say in berkeley where it all just feels so good Mm-hmm. But if you're in the factory that produced the iPhone that you're using in Berkeley, it mm, doesn't feel so good, right? When you're being forced to have an abortion mm-hmm. and you're chained down in a factory and you're trying to jump off the roof, but they literally have suicide nets. I mean, we need to be clear about this. And so it's a double-edged thing. We, we are experiencing more privilege 
here than ever before, no doubt. And I, I want to enjoy that and I want to take advantage of that. But at the same time, I want to keep in perspective that this doesn't, that doesn't make this the healthiest system ever. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's true. I mean, it's, it sort of bleeds out into every area of your life. Like we we're just saying, if you want to go get a job somewhere, you have to sort of be aware of, you know, what the consciousness and the culture is of where you're going to go work. But then also, like you just said, all these devices, you know, we're, we're sitting here with a ton of equipment here, a soundboard and microphones and all this stuff and um, iPads and computers and all this stuff. I mean, it's um, it's this really delicate balance. It's um, yeah. It's and we're lucky because we can we can use that stuff to create these really conscious businesses, right? So that's where that's where this is all really interesting. It gives us an opportunity to go start these amazing businesses with these really alternative cultures and w- cultures that do really good things. But it's easy to lose sight of sort of what what is affording that, mm. what's affording that to happen. So back to what you were saying before, like it's it's difficult to find a job sometimes in a company that you feel really good about, but it's easier than ever to start your own company. And more than ever, it's really easy. You know, even when I first got into this, the idea of having a, being able to process credit cards as an example, that was, that was much more difficult than it is today, right? Now you can basically, for almost nothing, set up a system where you can take electronic money like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but more easy than ever to just set your own website up. Remember when you had to program all that? Now you can basically use these amazing template systems um, and uh, like WordPress or Squarespace and just set up your own website. Um, it's easier than ever to get your own thing going. Um, and I, like I said, I, I'm really excited about that, but I just, I think it needs to be said because right now what's going on is there's this huge movement for this thing of like conscious entrepreneurism. Mm-hmm. And there's some really wonderful people out there and people who's, who I like to listen to, but everyone's acting like, oh, it's the spiritual revolution in business. And it's like, look, we need to be clear about what business is in the first place. Mm-hmm. Because what business is, especially in capitalism, is a system that gets us to compete against one another, which means when we're competing against each other, we can't really join forces, can we? Mm-hmm. Right? right? If we're competing over market share. And yeah. the natural thing for human beings is to band together into tribes. Mm-hmm. That's what we naturally want to do. And we want to work together this mutualism, a shared fate. We want to work together. Now, one cool thing I think about modern companies, and I'll say this about my own company, Sir Thrival, is that the people I work with in this business, we have a shared fate. We are a tribe. We're a tribe and our community that we um, provide products to and services to is our extended tribe. They're like a family. Mm-hmm. We don't like to call, uh, in, within the company culture, we don't refer to those people who purchase stuff from us as customers. We call them clients. Mm-hmm. And that's just a cultural thing because that idea, I don't love this idea of where we're, I'm taking advantage of my employees and then as a company we're taking advantage of our customers and ah, it's this big scheme to accumulate debt notes. Ha, 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 ha. Right. right? So, so what we have to do is figure out how to make, while we're in sort of Babylon's system, <laughs> you know, we have to figure out how to do this stuff righteously, as righteously as we can, as righteously as we can, and set up systems because it's easy to right now that do as much good as we can. Um, and I'd say right now it's easier than ever to do that. I think the average person can get a company moving fairly quickly. Um, and the internet is a wild west still, where it's it's very simple to get things started. Are you uh, optimistic and excited about where things are going for uh, with with Sir Thrival and people's response to uh, to the work you're doing? Yeah, and a few for a few different reasons. I mean, one one is that I'm I'm excited because it's really allowed me to continue my outreach. Mm. So one thing Sir Thrival does is it it gives me the ability to continue to produce content, teaching the message that's most important to me. Mm-hmm. The product line is stuff that for me is incredibly important for people to stay healthy in the modern world. Mm -hmm. And so I feel really great about that. But that's not like, you know, that's not my goal. My heart's mission is to share my message. And so what I've done is I've set up a company that allows me to provide products of high value to people to help people stay really healthy. Um, and But it also allows me to have my outreach. And I think it's important that companies have something like that where they give back. So Sir Thrival funds the Daniel Vitalis mission. It also funds the findaspring.com mission. And so the whole message of rewilding and the whole message of spring water and all these things that I've been bringing for the last several years have all been fueled by Sir Thrival, which is the sort of business 
wing of that mission and it's all one big combined thing i feel really optimistic about where it's headed and i like seeing it's exciting to see i mean we've all seen this big company starting to get involved in what we do also we all can feel the sort of mm, de- degradation of what we do by big companies right so it's a it's a double edged thing it's like it's really great to see that walmart's going to carry organic food that's great at the same time we know that they have the power to degrade the quality of organic food that's not a good thing. Mm. So it's double-edged, right? I wish I could just get here and say, oh, isn't it all great, guys, where it's all headed? It's headed to this great crescendo where everybody's free. Right. But ultimately, <laughs> I don't really think that's what it is. And I, I feel that I need to bust through that illusion because I don't hear anyone else really doing it. And I'm, I'm amazed that people are, are how cherished certain illusions are, mm. right? Now, of course, we all want to be like intensely free. I think most of us want that. But I mean, let's let's be real. Let's be real about what's going on. And and um, I'll say this: having my own company affords me, like I said, the luxury to be on this conversation naked in the sun right now at my home. I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to do. Nobody tells me like Daniel, this is what you have to do today. Right. Nobody yeah. tells me that. Right. I'm my own boss. But what the IRS does step in and take a third of what I make. Right, yeah. exactly. And I want to be, I think that needs to be said too. It's not like it's all, it's not all just, you know, easy at the top of this thing. It's, it's, it's challenging. And anybody who has their own business knows there's times where you work more than you would have worked. You don't, what I don't have is the luxury at the end of the day to just go, oh, my work day's done now. I can just let my mind go wherever I want. <laughs> right. I don't right. ever stop. You know what I mean? It's nonstop. And so, so most of us who are entrepreneurs are actually, um, extreme overachievers who are willing to sacrifice more than most people really want to sacrifice. Yeah. So I think that's one thing. If we're going to have our own businesses, we need to be prepared that especially in those first five years, it's as you guys know, right? It's, yeah. a, it's not like at the end of the day, you just stop working, right? Oh, like no. when do you have to really stop working? Yeah, it goes yeah. on and on and we on. We hear you. We're going to take a little bit of yeah. a break. This is so much fun. I love talking with you, Daniel, about this uh, subject. It's so cool. This is episode 299 of Extreme Health Radio, and we broadcast live four days a week on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific, so make sure to join us on those days if you're interested in joining the chat room and making some friends and have a little party in the, in the <laughs> chat room. So we'll be right back right after this break. Did you know that conventional dog food contains antibiotics, herbicides, pesticides, ground up carcasses from roadkill subjected to high heat processing, artificial colors, chemical preservatives, way too many carbohydrates, genetically modified corn syrups, indigestible grains, and a lack of moisture content in the dry kibble? Obviously, this can lead to health conditions like diabetes, itchy skin, teeth and gum problems, liver damage, obesity, behavioral issues, pancreatic problems, and even cancer. That's why we we recommend the Barf Diet, which is the biologically appropriate raw food diet from Barf World. Their unprocessed raw meats contain bone, organ meats, vitamins, and minerals that are loaded with enzymes. Barf World founder Robert Mueller explains more. Sure, I don't have to convince you on the damage that's caused by high heat to food. So as a result, we see many skin disorders, a lot of arthritis, obesity, heart disease, cancers. I mean, it's just rampant. The pet clinics are just all of these conditions and basically a large percentage of the commercial pet food that's made is made up of the human industry leftover and the pet food industry makes use of this waste product and in addition to that we are subjected to the products coming out of the rendering plants garbage in garbage out if you feed garbage your dog, you're going to end up with garbage health. And all if you put the right gas in, your engine runs smoother and lasts longer. So if you put the right fuel in the tank, you're going to get the right output. Garbage in, garbage out. We've seen an immense difference with our dog Maggie being on this diet. Give your dog the gift of health today by going to extremehealthradio.com forward slash barf or go to our store. That's extremehealthradio.com slash barf to learn even more. If you're taking one, two, five, or more nutritional supplements, please stop. Simplify your supplementation with Bio Superfood, the most advanced whole food supplement you can buy. Men, women, children, and even Olympic athletes the world over have discovered Bio Superfood from BioAge.com. And now just take one nutritional supplement instead of many. The Bio Superfood formulas are whole food products composed of four of the most nutrient-dense algae found on Earth. 
Bio Superfood for the brain helps with focus, memory, clarity, and mood. And if you can increase brain health, the rest of the body is a no-brainer. Bio Superfood has zero toxicity, is safe for you and your family, and it helps protect against radiation exposure. Learn more and order your Bio Superfood formulas at extremehealthradio.com slash bioage or call 877-288-9116. Get 10% off your order using coupon code JUSTIN at extremehealthradio.com slash bioage. Bioage, the age of advanced organics. All free shows, all the time, on Extreme Health Radio. Opening minds and transforming lives worldwide. Join our community today. Sign up to our email list and instantly get our free gift to you, along with loads of inspirational content and cutting-edge tips to help change your life. At extremehealthradio.com slash subscribe. Well, Kate, not many jobs where you could lay around naked in the sun. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> even though we have a pretty good, that sounds even better. I know. That sounds pretty amazing. Sounds like a lizard. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my gosh. That's what so awesome. What a cool, awesome. cool thing. Yeah, it's just so cool. This is episode 299. We'll have all the show links on this uh, page here. And uh, just as, uh, as our, you know, a little insight into our story, it was the same kind of thing as with Daniel Vitalis. Um, I spent about, I got originally into health around 2002 or so, 2003, and I literally just devoured information like, you know, cassette tapes, podcasts, interviews, reading books, going to the Longevity Now conferences, going to hear David Wolf speak, and just going to all these different places, and it just ruled my life for 10 years. Uh, And then I decided I wanted to start doing something to help people How could I share whatever kind of knowledge I've been able to accumulate in the best way possible that fits my natural gifts? And so that's when I had the idea of starting a show like this where I can give other people the platform and hopefully I can, you know, ask some questions that are meaningful to people from my own experience. But I feel like for me, in order to have a business, you know, if I were a 25 year old guy starting trying to start something now in the health space, it seems to me that one of the best things that you could do is develop yourself. Work on who you are, what your passions are, and then focus on perhaps having your mission be to help people. Yeah, adding Uh, value to people's lives. Yeah, adding value to people's lives and helping them achieve their goals. Do you think those are two good places to start, Daniel? I I really do. And I think it's really important that we ask ourselves, like, hey, what is my unique thing that I bring to this space? I remember um, when I first got in, I was into raw foods for a long time, and I really wanted to be uh, work in this space, you know, because I had the things that I was doing, I was getting closer, I was finding jobs that were closer and closer to what I wanted to do, that, but they never felt quite right. Mm. And I knew that I wanted to get out there and I wanted to do something unique in the space, and I would look at the people who were the real dominant voices at that time. And I would ask, like, okay, this is what this is what they do. What do I bring to the table? And I just kept asking that and asking that. If I could have seen ahead to now how developed my work has become and my message has become, I'd have been stunned. Mm. Hmm. I would have been truly, truly stunned. It's so once you get started, the evolution is rapid, and our environment's evolving so quickly that things. I just it's amazing. You know, there's a saying that I've I kind of live by, or one of the sayings I live by. It's that a person tends to overestimate what they'll accomplish in one year, but they dram dramatically or drastically underestimate what they'll do in five. So, you know, you think like, oh yeah, I got a year ahead of me. I'm going to get this done. I'm going to get this done. And then a year goes by and you're like, whoa, that went fast. Mm -hmm. But five years out, it's like, my goodness, look what I've accomplished and how far it's come and how I never could have perceived that it would have. Got, that it would have been so it's pretty exciting when your work's really being accepted by people when they really love it when they're asking for more and you know you're in that flow you're dialed into that flow what i would recommend people be really conscious of there's a ten i was very surprised getting into the space just how many people stole my work just how many people would copy my product line just how many people would 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 just copy our stuff and i mean that's something I had to learn to accept is there's people out there with a really different set of ethics mm-hmm. than you might first expect. So going into this, I never thought I would have to, you know, use trademarks or get copyrights or protect. I just didn't think people were like that. Yeah. Now I know most people aren't like that, but there are people like that. So, so don't be that person. 
right? Go in, if you're going to go into this space, come into it from a place of abundance and not scarcity. Because scarcity will make you want to copy what other people are doing. But abundance will, will help you to find, the, abundance as a mentality, as a mindset, will help you find your unique gift. I always feel really bad for people who's, who are copying other people because it's like not only are they hurting somebody else in a way, but they're not actually ever finding their unique gift mm-hmm. and their unique voice and what they want to bring. And another thing I want to say is not, obviously not everybody can be, can go out there and become a voice. A, 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 not everybody's the singer of the band, mm-hmm. hmm. right? There are a lot of people who don't want to be the singer of a band. There are people who want to like hang back and play bass. Mm-hmm. There are people who like to drum or play guitar. And similarly, in a company setting, in a business setting, that's been what's been most important for me because I am one of those singers in the band type characters. My 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 gift is one of my strengths is called command and it's the ability to speak with a voice of, of authority mm-hmm. and I have that gift but not everybody in my company has that gift thank goodness <laughs> right? right because it would never work right there's a sorry for this is a bit of a politically incorrect kind of comment but there's the saying of uh, too many chiefs and not enough Indians mm-hmm. Right, as I know, that's a weird one to use, but but mm-hmm. I think it illustrates what I mean, which is that there's a tendency for right now the current environment because there's so many people out there promoting entrepreneurism and saying like you got to get out there with your unique voice and do your thing. Well, it's like some people feel pressure to do that when that's not actually their calling. Mm-hmm. So so I think it's important that we identify what our strengths are. And and one say, one thing I'll say about Sir Thrival's culture is before we hire anybody, we go through a battery of personality testing to determine what a person's strengths are so that we position them in a job that will be fulfilling for them. Mm. Or if we have a specific job, we make sure to test all our applicants who we're serious about so that we, we're sure we're not hiring somebody for a position that they're not going to feel fulfilled in. Mm. And I think that's really, really important because throughout history, historically, people get stuck in jobs that do not fulfill them. Mm-hmm. And um, that's really important. For instance, if I get stuck in a job where I have to do math, if I have to do a k- spreadsheets, if I have to do accounting, guess what's never going to work for me? Yeah. I need to be out there in the front forging. I need to be sharing my voice. But most of the people in my company are not that way. They are finding things. Some people love sales. Some people love behind the scenes. Some people love to do, like, for instance, I don't make, you know, I don't make, I'm not the one making my dispatches, my online magazine beautiful. That's not what I do. I write the content. But I have somebody working with me who likes to make it beautiful. So it's important that everybody works in their strengths. And that's one of the big focuses. That's actually one of the primary focuses and strengths that Survival has as a culture is that we identify those things first before we hire. That's so cool. Yeah, and it's interesting, too, because uh, it seems to be you know in this um, culture a little bit more lately, at least, um, there seems to be this idea of competition. You know, A lot of people will write to me and they'll say, hey, uh, check out this show over here and and look at what they're doing as competition. And, you know, I just want to say, like, you know, another show providing the same kind of content we are, that's awesome. I, I, the more the message can get, can get out, the better. And it seems like yeah, uh, in yeah, today's totally. world. So, so it's interesting. There's just, again, I think personally something, I don't know, you know where you guys stand on this, but something I've identified for myself about reality is that there isn't ever just a, uh, the idea of a one thing, oneness, a universe, uni, is sort of the biggest picture. But mm-hmm. most of what we experience has two sides always, right? It's always got a, a plus and a negative. The plus of competition is that they make the market bigger. I mean, you, the, if the market can bear a second survival, for instance, that means more and more people are getting involved in this. That's great. Mm-hmm. That's great. When it's challenging, for instance, is when somebody copies your exact product offering, yeah. And then you uses the same copy off your website. And then when you contact them, they tell you, I don't know what you're talking about. And they hang up on you, that yeah. kind of thing where you're like, wow, I didn't know there were people who were like that. Yeah. So to me, that's, that's somebody not living in their authenticity. Now on the flip is if somebody, if for instance, pine pollen as a market begins to expand, that just means more people are learning about it. And I'm winning that way too. That's great. Right. We're all winning. It's like perfect. Yeah. That's actually excellent. Right. So, so competition has these two different sides. The challenge, I think, is, is that because we're all competing over um, these falsely limited 
Federal Reserve debt notes, mm-hmm. there it can engender a sense of scarcity. Like, how am I going to get my money? And one thing I think you guys got to know this. I mean, you got to be experiencing this all the time. <laughs> the marketplace right now is demanding we provide a ton of free content. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can't, you know, you can't charge for this show. Everybody will just go. They can go get free shows anywhere. That's right. Right. I have. A, I'm putting a tremendous amount of energy into a free magazine because the market demands that, and they want videos and they want interviews and and we all want free, right? So. So it's one of the big challenges we have now is figuring out how do we get the money that we need to support our operations in a way that's ethical and supports the – so it's win-win-win because I want anybody upstream of me. For instance, I obviously don't raise elk to make elk antler extract, uh-huh. right? I work with people who are brilliant <laughs> at that, and I want them to win, and I want to win, but I also want my clients to win. I don't want anyone to feel like they're being screwed in that line, right? Everybody needs to win, including the people who work on my team. So, so I need everybody to win, 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 win. And while putting out a lot of free content, that can be an interesting challenge. And that's one of the reasons competition can feel, or so-called competition can feel scary. But one thing I do want to say is that just like in nature, if there's a resource, lots of organisms will kind of so-called compete over it, mm-hmm. right? And this, this, can be symbiotic. It doesn't have to be parasitic. So I think that what we have is somebody might start up a radio show that's similar to yours, but it actually might be symbiotic. They might actually be helping, Mm. but then somebody might copy you exactly and they might actually be a parasite. So I think both things exist. There's parasitic competition and there's symbiotic competition, just like an ecosystem. And I think it's important to be aware of the difference between the two because one comes from a Somebody could compete with you, but they're doing their heart's mission, and actually it's totally legit. Mm-hmm. Somebody else could compete with you from a place of scarcity, and that's that parasitic energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, that, I, that paints a good picture. I've seen that. I've seen that online. Different people, I follow different marketers as well online, and I've seen that happen, and uh, it's, it's crazy. So with your, you just brought up your elk velvet antler. I'm just curious, when you first started Sir Thrival and uh, developing products like this, uh, how did you source the products? I know you can't reveal too much, but... Ha- how did you figure out how to go get clean product and all that? Well, for me, it started with products that I was using, things that I was testing and things that I was using. And I think one of the great strengths that I've had is been able to, I've been able to identify people who are doing things the way I would do them if that was my strength, with the level of integrity that I would do if that was my strength. And they're really good at that. But what you'll often find is the person, let's just, we'll pick, you know, let's say that that person who's doing the perfect goji berry, that person is doing the perfect cacao, that mm-hmm. person who's doing the perfect elk antler or reishi mushroom, they're often so focused on that that what they usually aren't that good at is putting it out to the world. Mm-hmm. What I have, a t- I have a strength in is getting in front of people fearlessly and sharing from the heart. And so if I can team up with people who are doing the ideal production, then I can step up and do that ideal uh, promotion. That makes sense? So that I'm working in my strength and they're working in their strength. You see a lot of really great products that are poorly advertised or you see a lot of crappy products that are really well advertised. Yeah, Those are two very that. common things in our industry. Yeah. Hmm. So it makes sense. Instead, I work from a strengths-based paradigm, which means I have identified what my strengths are and I've identified what the strengths in my operation are. And we make sure to stay only in our strengths. And if we need something that we're not strong in, we can outsource that. So we find the people who are really good at that. Right? So I'll, here's a little like inside picture of it. When Sir Thrival first started, our customers would order from us. Our clientele would, would reach out to us. And then we would, we would actually have those products and we would ship them. So you know, my brother worked for me at the time, and he would, you know, get on his skateboard with a bag of products and go down <laughs> to the to the post office and uh-huh. literally mail this stuff direct to you, wow. you know. Nice. And as we've grown, we've now we work with an amazing team in Connecticut who warehouses and ships our product, and they are like a mom and pop fulfillment center. Really cool people, and their mission, what they do, is they ship product and they do it better than we could ever do it. Wow. And they create a ton of freedom for us so that we don't then have to stock all that stuff and take it over to the post office. And they get way better deals on shipping so we can charge less shipping to our clients. Right. So it's a, a much cleaner, slicker operation. They work in their strengths. We work in our strengths. And part of a good business in this modern, always changing, evolving and um, business world, busyness world mm-hmm. is 
learning how the old school where you did it all in house that's sort of going away right those gigantic operations with thousands of staff and they're all working in there and they have a shipping department and they have a stocking department and they have an accounting department yeah. and they, that's a lot to manage that's a lot of moving parts yeah. if i was doing that that would take me out of my lifestyle i would not be a credible as a speaker anymore i'd be so busy doing all those things yeah. that i wouldn't be credible as a speaker so what's what makes more sense for most of us is to start start businesses if we're going to that allow us to stay in our strength and stay aligned with our mission and to let other people do the work that they're best at so that everybody's always feeling like they're working in their strength. Hmm. I love the way you sort of laid the foundation with just how you evolved and sort of got into all this because like you said, you, you, you were experimenting, you were on this path, you were listening to Tony Robbins, all this stuff and you were learning and all that and then you started to speak for a couple of years and then so by the time you started Sir Thrival, and you would reach out to these people making or, or developing or shipping these amazing products. Uh, you, when you went to go reach out to them, you already had this established body of work. Uh, so Yeah, and, like and that means that I had a community of people that I was talking to. Yeah. So the people who've been following my work over the years and the people who are just beginning to follow the work that I do are... You know, which I like to call the rewilding community, but let's, you know, obviously a lot of these people, like somebody who, who really likes my work might also like the work of somebody over here in the raw food world or somebody over here in the paleo world. It's not like they're just, you know, my community, like as if I've got them all in a pen somewhere, right? These are dynamic individuals who aren't going to accept less than my best, mm -hmm. right? But they do follow my work and they do want to support what I do and they do see the authenticity of what I'm doing. So by having that community of people, then I can bring to them products and services that benefit them. Now, if I come to market with some piece of crap product, they're going to figure that out. And that's gonna, I'm going to lose my credibility. Mm. Right? I have to maintain a certain level of honesty, authenticity, and credibility. I mean, that's really crucial. So the products have to line up, but it makes a lot of sense to come, for me, what's made sense, I should say, is to first develop a community um, pull people together under a common mission and a common heart and then bring things to them that they're interested in. That, to me, makes a lot more sense in our current world, especially in the world of social networking, than to try to bring a, a business model in and then try... What a lot of people are trying to do is scrape together clientele. Mm -hmm. And so what I see a lot of is like phishing for web... For, for email addresses, right? You know when you all of a sudden you get this newsletter, you're like, I never signed up for this newsletter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? How did I even get this? Like, or, you, know, you know when somebody wait don't hang up I want to tell you about a great opportunity you know when you get those <laughs> phone calls it's like yeah. that's because they don't have anyone to talk to and they don't have anyone to talk to because they haven't first come to the table with that um, very high quality free offering so I came to the table first with hey I've got something to share and whether I sell anything ever this is what is in my heart it's in my heart to wake people up and say hey this has been a, a, a system of slavery uh, a system that's destroying the earth and keeping you from ever being fully fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And I want to identify that and let's come up with strategies to get our health back and to strategies to get um, our sovereignty back. That's my mission. Mm -hmm. That's first. That's primary. I can never let products come first. Mm -hmm. I have to keep that first. From there, then if I want to, you know, if I, if I discover something really cool, my community wants to know that. Mm -hmm. Right? If I find something great, hey, this is really working for me, of course my community wants to know that. But at first, we got to develop trust with individuals, right? So if I, come, if I stop you on the street and say, hey, I want to tell you about elk velvet, you're going to be like, dude, leave me alone. <laughs> but if you really trust me and we've spent time together and you know that my heart is good, then I want to tell you about that. Now maybe you'll listen and you'll hear because, you know, and I think you guys have such a similar model. You've been sharing... You know, you don't get out there and put the level of work in that you guys have put in and put out the amount of free content and sacrifice so much time to that could be spent lying around naked out in the sun. You don't do that for no reason, right? You've done that, and that gives credibility to the other things you're talking about and, and increases the likelihood somebody is going to support your you know, products you recommend or support services you recommend. And so, especially now, I, again... Ten years ago, you could hide behind the anonymity of a corporation. Oh, yeah. Now, with social networking, everyone sees right into your underwear, right? It's like, hey, I know what you guys are really doing. I mean, all you have to do is just go into somebody's social networks and you see what they're doing for real. So I, one thing I really like about the current environment is that people who are inauthentic, it's easier to identify that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah definitely. And I, I think agree. It, it's cool too because it's you know for people that don't really have their heart into a business, um, this kind of culture and cultural online social media type environment it really does hurt those people because for the people like us who like our main mission is talking to people like you and sharing this life changing information. And we just want the, you know, the financial side. Our goal is just to be able to have that sustain us so we can keep doing our mission, which is this kind of stuff, empowering people. And it just goes back to what you were saying earlier about how, you know, in these days people require and need and sort of want tons of free content. I mean, you just started a, a podcast yourself, you know, and you have your magazine and, you know, people sort of require that and for people like us who love to deliver that. And that's mainly our, our mission for us. That's really fun. I love it. Yeah. And so again, the big challenge, a lot of people I know are, and, and let's identify another thing that's sort of, again, taboo to talk about for some reason, but it seems so obvious. <laughs> Most people's social networks have become a part-time job for them. <laughs> totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Regular people truth. who get who gain nothing out of it, right? They're fishing for friends. They're trying to build their networks. They're working their asses off trying to build their social networks, and that's not even their job. And so it's like it's already like part time work for people. Right. It's so <laughs> I think this is really ironic because people are like isn't this great? It's so free. Wow, we all can talk. Man, it's so great. The internet's so great. It's like <laughs> really because it's just doubled your workload, dude. Yeah. Seriously, you know, like. That's ironic. I think that's funny, but sad, tragic, funny. Um, we have to be really careful as you move forward and you're giving free content out. I'm talking not to you, but to somebody who's listening who's doing this already or thinking about doing this. Make sure that you figure out how you're going to sustain yourself because and something I've talked about on the show with you guys before is this idea that, that you, you don't go try to rescue somebody if you're not prepared for that environment. So you don't go try to rescue somebody in the water if you don't know how to do that. Because you're, it's more likely that you're not going to rescue them, that you're going to become trapped in that scenario too. And now two people need to be rescued, and now you've doubled the threat to the people who are coming in who know how to do the rescue. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So similarly, don't throw yourself out there and put all this work in if, you're, <laughs> if you don't have some understanding of what you're, how you're going to get your needs made, taken care of as well. So I have to always walk that. That's a fine balance for me um, because, yeah, I have a free podcast and I have a free magazine and I'm writing a book and I, I'm doing all this free work. Right? I do, and just so people know, when you go give a, a lecture, you go, you know, by the time you factor food, travel, lodging, all that, the energy expended, you don't make money from public speaking very much. It's difficult to, not until you're seriously, you know, big in the, in the you know, out there because there's just not a lot of money in diet, right? If somebody pays 30 to 300 bucks for a ticket, when by the time, you know, it's just, that's not where you make money. Mm. So, so you got to have some strategy for how you're going to do that. Otherwise, what ends up happening is you end up working a full-time job for no payback. And then that, that starts to become where you could actually get into the pattern of resenting your community. So make sure you know in advance sort of or you have some kind of plan about how you're going to do that so it's sustainable so that you, you can give free – because there's nothing better than actually being able to give freely. Let me, let me say that a different way. Because Sir Thrival provides my income, I'm able to talk freely about other subjects without having to stick plugs in there, without having to – have an ulterior motive of sales. Does that make sense? Right. That allows me to have a level of authenticity and freedom in the communication. And people perceive that. They see that. There's not, people know that at the end of my interview, it's not some s- schemey sales pitch coming, that I can just speak from the heart. And I've set that up in such a way, I feel really blessed, honestly, that it's come together that way too. I mean, part of that was strategic. Part of that, I just feel really blessed. But that allows me to, to freely share and also Sir Thrival supports my needs so that I can love my community and have my heart open, not feel like, how do I get something out of these people? Yeah. And that's what we want to be really conscientious about because I see that happening a lot. You can feel when there's desperation in somebody's message. Right, mm. right. You can feel that. And that's a turnoff. And so we want to be able to, to be sustainable in such a way that we can keep that, that heart I guess that's the word I keep coming back to. Because one of the things, what do corporations lack? They lack a heart, mm-hmm. right? Corporations are corporal. They're a body. They're, a, they're an artificial person is essentially what a corporation is. Mm-hmm. But it's an artificial entity. It's got a lot of brain. It doesn't have a lot of heart. And most of us can feel that. It's not like we're like, oh, Colgate. Like, there's so much heart there. <laughs> totally. even, when they, even when they fake it in the commercials, 
you f- you're like, nope, I see right through that. Yep, mm-hmm. exactly. So most of us can see through that. So you want to make sure that whatever it is you're offering the world, you can do it with heart. Otherwise, what's the point? I don't even get what the point is. I don't understand what the point of a business is where you make lots of money, but you're like in this place of, you know, like where you can't actually express your heart. It seems so empty and lifeless to me. So I don't even get I can't understand how the people at Monsanto can even live like that. How yeah. do you even make it through the day like that? I oh, just can't a, get it. Yeah, you know? it's, it's crazy. Are there any uh, books that you would recommend for people like, uh, that, you know, that would talk about some of the things you talked about today? Are there any books you like? Well, Business. I want to share a couple of things that have really helped me personally. Yeah. David Allen wrote the book GTD, Getting Things Done. That was an incredibly powerful read for me um, and also audio. I've listened to it several times. And everybody who uh, joins Sir Thrival's team goes through that training so that we all operate how we run our business off the most streamlined, efficient um, system we know of. Mm-hmm. Basically, what GTD does is it allows you to keep your brain, your head, your RAM stress-free. It's a way of logging what it is you need to do um, knowing when it's accomplished and keeping everything out of your head so your head is free to enjoy life and not constantly be worrying about, did I forget to do this? Oh, am I supposed to do that? Oh, I got to get this done. So it's uh, David Allen's book has been very helpful and, and it's, we've incorporated it into Sir Thrival's culture. So everybody there um, uses that to be as inf- effective as they can be, which minimizes the amount of stress and work that they have to put in on a thing, yeah, on a given project or activity. So that's been really crucial. The other one is a book called Strengths Finder, which is a really simple read um, with a little test that you take online, and it identifies your top five strengths, and that helps you to figure out what your, where you can best serve, but also helps you identify with other people. So well, here's something I see all the time. You guys may be familiar with this kind of a scenario is that people will want to start a business and then they'll hire a whole bunch of people who they feel a lot of kinship with, people who are like them. Mm-hmm. And so what you end up with is often a very creative person hiring a bunch of other really creative people and then nothing can ever get done because all anyone wants to do is focus on big picture creative stuff. Hmm. Right. Totally. So, right, that there's a tendency sense. to do that. So if you're that big picture thinker, you're that creative person, you need people with strengths in execution who actually go out and do the stuff. You need people with completion strengths Mm -hmm. so they actually can wrap the tasks up, right? So that you're free to just create and you know once you create an idea, you have people who can bring that idea to the world. Mm -hmm. For instance, that's an example. So those two books are are incorporated into Sir Sir Thrival's culture um, and have really, really helped us to... To, to create an environment where, where we, we can trust. See, again, I said before that none of our staff works in a central location. That means I have to have people I can really trust to get the job done at home. They need to be motivated enough to do that, too. I mean, working at home sounds great. Try it. You might find that actually without somebody leaning over your shoulder, it's hard to get stuff done. Uh, you've got to be self-motivated. So, so I need to work with people who I understand. I need to understand their strengths, and I need to trust their systems. So I need to be able to say to somebody in the company, hey, I need A, B, and C done. And I need to know once I've said that. I hey, Daniel, can we, uh, can we call you right back? I'm so sorry. We're starting to get all that weird static. Can we yeah, call you right yeah, back? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Bummer. Okay, yeah, wow. That happened. Oh, man. I didn't want to cut him off. But ah. man, it, was, it was just so good. It was just, uh, I think maybe we were hearing a little bit less of it than the listeners. On I know, the other, uh, I know. But uh, let's call him right back. Let's try to get him right back on that thought. Hey, how's that? Okay, oh. way better. Awesome. Sorry about ah, that. Great, great. So, what I was just saying was essentially I use GTD because it's a system for how our, we execute tasks in the company and it allows me to hand a task off to somebody and not have to worry about whether they they know how to do it or whether they're going to do it or whether they're going to forget or anything like that i trust my my people's my my team's systems uh-huh. and strengths finder helps me to know that the tasks i hand out are given to the right person because so, the last thing i want to do is give a task to somebody that's not in their strength because they're not going to enjoy it and they're not going to do a good job of and they it. won't be passionate about it so is that a an online website or is that a book um, GTD, well, like anything now, right? It's all online, but GTD is a book okay. written some time ago by David Allen, but it's essentially timeless. You can get an audio version at a place like Audible uh, or probably on Amazon, And um, but there's obviously a very strong web interface. Strengths Finder is a book with um, a website integrated with it, mm-hmm. and we use both. 
And we use other things as well, but those are the two main things that I've really enjoyed using um, to build the company's uh, culture. Yeah, I know. It's cool. I love, I love what you're doing, and I love uh, the fact that you know, your work gets to be put out there. Because with the social media, it's so funny. With uh, you know, 30 years ago, you know, people that were doing businesses like this uh, couldn't really get their message out, couldn't get their heart out as much. And, um, and so for that, in that respect, um, I do like social media. I have my issues with it, but um, I like the fact that we can spread our messages through these different types of channels. And um, it's been awesome watching you. Um, part of my learning when I was first getting into this was uh, part of my learning was uh, listening to you on different talks around the internet. Um, really? <laughs> yeah, it's just amazing. No, that's cool. Yeah, I think it's important that we remember our phones, our laptops, our Wi-Fi, our our social networks are meant to be our slaves. We're not meant to be enslaved by them. Mm. Make sure that you maintain the the right relationship with these these services and these devices because if, if we're not careful they run our lives very quickly so we need to always be kind of keeping the upper hand and make sure that these systems don't become um, slave masters to us but rather they become our servants yeah that's I, great I advice I think that most yeah 99% of people don't use it correctly or yeah become oh, yeah. overtaken easily <laughs> overtaken easily especially with cell phones and all yep. that hey Daniel have you ever thought about I'm sure you you have or have not or, or whatever but uh, would you ever do anything in, in the space of teaching people how to do a conscious business? Or uh, is that something yeah, that you, you've ever thought You know, <laughs> <laughs> as I said in the beginning, it's a touchy one for me because it's hard to promote something that I ultimately think is, is immoral. So it's kind of like if, uh, you know, let's say this was the slave trade in the early United <laughs> States. Like, like, yeah, could I produce a program about how to better run your slaves? Like, <laughs> oh, geez, that's pretty sick, actually. <laughs> that's right? pretty gross. So, so right? So I don't... <laughs> But at the same time, um, there are certain principles that are really exciting to me. For instance, one thing I love about David Allen's book, Getting Things Done, is it's an incredibly effective system for running a business. But honestly, I use it primarily to run my life. Mm. So even if I didn't do business, it's very effective for me just to manage my own life. So I think what I could do in the future is produce or at least share um, ways of making things work in the business environment. But I think I would have to be really careful never to make it about capitalism or any other ism because I really don't believe in those. But I do think that strategies that help us be more effective. And do I have a couple minutes to, oh, for sure. to give a little insight? Yeah, please. Well, in, in the past, here's something I want to say. Here's a more big picture. In the past, I've done shows with you guys where we talked about the four elements, right? So we talked about, and these would be great shows if people are just tuning in and haven't heard uh, prior work I've done with you guys, but I, I love working off this idea of earth, water, air, and fire. And so we did a show, Earth, about food. We did one on water, which is about our drinking water, air, about the air we breathe, and fire, about the sunlight we need and our relationship to electronic light. This helps us to create a balanced picture of nutrition and elimination because it's not just food that we need, right? It's, it's We need all of those things, our actions nutrition mm -hmm. and any focus on any one of those things at the expense of the others is imbalanced I use the same system to approach my life and so when I think about earth in my life earth is is my the physical realm it's it's where I'm a merchant it's where I'm an entrepreneur it's where I'm a business person water is where I'm an emotional person and it's where I need to maintain my relationships with other human beings right my from romantic to friendship to relational that's waters how i manage that air is my intellectual life i need to make sure i'm constantly learning and growing my mind so that's where i'm a philosopher philo sophie is the lover of wisdom philosophy to love wisdom and so i make sure that air is balanced in there that i'm growing my mind fire is this warrior sage archetype for me it's the it's maintaining my warrior and my spiritual connection i think those two things are very internetworked and so my my shaman my my warrior sage now i want to make sure that i run a really great business but not at the expense of any of those other things does that make sense it has to be balanced so i need my business life to be perfectly balanced against my relationships against my own learning and against my spiritual life mm -hmm. and if any one of those things becomes too big the other ones start to suffer and so that's a really simple system. You can just, you know, listening to this now, you can just ask yourself, hey, have I gotten too far out on any one of these things? Some people, like you were describing, Justin, when you first got into health, 
I know for me, when I first got into health, I was so obsessed with it. All I did was read, study, learn, 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 learn. And these other areas of my life maybe weren't as strong, yeah. right? Some people are like so focused on their relationship that they'll lose at the other aspects. Maybe their spiritual life suffers. Some people get so spiritual that they become actually flakes. Because it's like, why don't you do something in the physical world now? You know, like they just, it's like, I don't think that's spiritual at all when you get imbalanced that way. Right. And a lot of what we see are people are so focused on business that they lose their spiritual connection. They lose their relationships. Their, their, their partnerships fall apart. Um, and they stop learning. Mm-hmm. And so we want to make sure that we don't let busyness or business overtake these other three aspects, but that we keep all four in balance. And it's much, more of a, it's much more of a challenge, too, when you're uh, doing your own business because if you have your just a regular job, uh, which is awesome, so, you know, and a lot of people love that, and that's great, but if you're doing that, then it's a little bit easier. I, I think perhaps it's a little bit easier, depending on what you do, to have that balance. I know for me lately, the last probably few, uh, three or four days, I've, had this re- I've been way behind on everything in terms of work and business, and so I've been focusing all my time in that, and I realize... And I didn't take any time out for me today. I didn't go for a walk. I didn't. You didn't eat till two o'clock. You didn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's not good. So you guys are hitting it. This is the key. We need really, really good strategies to maintain, make sure, and that's that. I'd say is the greatest benefit of working for myself. See, working for somebody else means I need to spend eight hours a day in some space doing something that's probably not what I want to do, and ultimately, it's for somebody else's benefit. Mm-hmm. So that's really difficult to, to enjoy the lifestyle I want. On the flip, you need to be aware if you're going to start your own company, you're going to probably work more. And when the workday ends, you're going to continue to be working in your mind. And if you manage people, that's one of the biggest challenges. You know, I mean, a lot of people who've been on a workforce look at people who manage others and think, oh, yeah, it must be nice. (laughs) <laughs> Let me tell you, right. it's not that what it looks like. It's actually, even though you might be doing less tasks, the stress of managing other people's lives and trying to keep everybody happy is challenging. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot there. That said, it does afford us the ability, like you said, to create a lifestyle where you can just stop in the middle of the day and maybe go take care of your health. The challenge is actually doing that, <laughs> right? Right. So it's really important that we... We, we, we get strategic. We make sure we're eating, right? You ever have a day, guys, where you forget to drink water? I have. Oh, where, yeah. you, where I'm working all day and I'll be like, what is this headache from? And then it's like, oh my God, I didn't, I was so focused on working, I forgot to drink water. I'm the water guy. How did I do water that? Guy. Right? Yeah. right? So, so there's all these things. We need to be really conscientious about it. So set up, and I did a video on this recently uh, in my last dispatch, not the dispatch that just came out, the one before, Primal Movement. I show a video on my workspace, setting up a workspace that's harmonious for your body. That's really important. Making sure you're taking breaks every couple hours to move, to eat, to hydrate. I mean, it's amazing, but if we were, aren't careful, we'll get so sucked into the virtual world of our business that we'll forget and other things will suffer. Make sure that you're keeping this four, this, this sort of f- four quarters of your p- personal life pie balanced. Do, be conscious of your relationships. Hey, am I letting work overtake my relationships, especially with my intimate partner? Mm. That's really crucial. Am I, am I, Am I getting enough uh, intellectual stimulation so that I have new, fresh stuff to bring to my audience or to bring to my business? Um, And am I taking the time to stay spiritually connected? Because if you're not doing that, boy, it can be really hard to – it's like, what's the point of anything? Mm -hmm. If you don't feel spiritually connected, what's the point of being alive? Mm. why even be alive i can't even picture why being alive like the the whole idea of like an atheist it's like really why be alive for me i know there's no point so i need all those things to be balanced and that's a constant it's not like there's actually a balance point it's dynamic so it's not a stasis homeostasis the idea of stasis means static not moving it's homeodynamesis it's things moving so it's more like spinning plates and I might get the business plate spinning really good, and then I run over and I get the spiritual plate spinning, and then but then I run over and get the emotional one, and it's like, oh, it's starting to lag over on business. I run over there and get that spinning again. It's a lot of running around, keeping it all going, but when you find that dynamic balance, it's exciting because you're starting to really get into that lifestyle that you, you knew was possible. And then you have more to offer and more to give because you're learning and doing you know new things and growing and expanding, and that way you have more to give as well. So Yeah, cool. and it's exciting when when other people... Uh, one of the stresses of business is a lot of people are relying on you, but that's also one of the beautiful benefits is when you see that the work you're doing is supporting other people. 
mm-hmm. and and it's it's helping other people live the life they want to live. And and for me, part of the survival culture is that I'm not the only one surviving, but everybody in my company is also getting to do that too. And so so it's really beautiful to see that you're helping other people live the lifestyle they want, and you're supplying products or services that are helping people thrive. And the people who provide you with those things are also thriving. So everybody, so it's got to be win 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 all the way up and down the line. And and that getting to to be the one providing that for people or helping to provide that, that's a very satisfying feeling. So cool. Yeah, I Beautiful. love it. It's, it's amazing because, you know, with people starting businesses today, uh, you know, if they're not coming at it from a conscious area or, or they're not, you know, they haven't done work on themselves, you could see how quickly, so quickly, these types of things can get out of balance. You know, if you're not, yep. don't have that spiritual awareness before you start and haven't worked on yourself, you can see, boom, people are going to start getting, and they're going to start working 12, 15 hour days. And then their whole life, just like you just said, their whole life just sort of falls apart. Um, and so having that foundation, I think it's just awesome. Mm-hmm. Balance. Yeah, balance. balance. So you just started a podcast. Um, how long has it been going? How often do you do it? And what kinds of things do you do on that? <laughs> Like so many things I started, sort of like started kind of haphazardly. I was just started interviewing people for my magazine. Uh-huh. And, um, and you know, I write this magazine eight times a year. And it's, you know, it's not exactly written in the style that most people are, are wanting to absorb information now, which is sound bites. It's a pretty dense writing. Uh-huh. Um, but the podcasts are featured in there first before they go live on iTunes. And they're... I think they're they're in a they're in a format that a lot of people can really receive. Now, one of the benefits of doing the podcast for me is I'm getting to talk to people who I really want to hear from, like people who inspire me. So, I've got, you know, for the last 7 years or so, I've been this voice out there um sharing what I think. But it's so great to share with the audience who listens to me what these people who inspire me think and where some of this is coming from for me. So, you know, that's on iTunes, of course. It's a podcast. It's also featured, like I said, first in my magazine. So subscribe to that. But but for me, it's just been great to... to I guess it's becoming more of a professional podcast now. It, the first few episodes were just me just creating content for my magazine. And then it was like, wow, people are really liking this. Mm-hmm. And now, actually, what I think about the podcast is that in the that in the health space it's a very unique one because rewilding as a big picture topic is so diverse it means that i can pull in people from so many different areas and walks of life because all these things filter in mm-hmm. um the dispatches tend to be grouped and clumped together on a theme because i'm writing i'm first putting them in my magazine which has a theme so i've just finished um interviewing people on sort of um the topic of of how our brains are programmed from education from our birth experience things like that before that, I was on, on people who are into movement and, and exercise. Now I'm getting ready to go into sexuality, and I'm going to be interviewing quite a few experts on the sex topic. So um, that's just really fun, really fulfilling. So I have the magazine where I get to really share my what's in me. I have the podcast where I get to share um, the people who inspire me. And uh, right now I'm writing a book, which is exciting, where I get to really lay down the foundations of sort of the rewilding idea. Ooh. So all of that's been incredibly fulfilling. That's so cool. I just love how Sir Thrival, like you said before, Sir Thrival just sort of pays for you to do your mission and do your work and get this information out. It's sort of like this is what your real passion is, right? And Sir Thrival just sort of supports that. I love that. So and cool. Sir Thrival's a big, pa- I mean, it is a big passion of mine because the products that are there are things that have really helped me in my life. And you know, one of the th- challenges of having a company, by the way, I mean, if you're thinking of going into this nutrition or supplement industry, I would caution you. I mean, it's a difficult industry mm-hmm. because it's getting harder and harder. And one of the big challenges is we're not free to talk about what our products do. Yeah. And one of the biggest challenges is I'm not free to post the testimonials that come from people. So we get these, you know, we get these, this feedback like, you know, oh my God, my kid can talk now and has never been able to speak. Or wow, my, you know, my husband gets erections now. He had erectile dysfunction. Or oh my God, we used this and it helped us beat a cancer. I mean, we get this most amazing feedback every single day. But the FDA considers those testimonials to be advertising, and we run on the careful side mm. um, with advertising. So, so the the amount of excitement and passion that happens within there, we have to be very careful sharing. But I really do like putting products out there that people could go get and make and produce themselves, but most people don't do that. And so it's nice to be able to produce and provide those for people. 
and it's really nice to have that support me getting to share the rest of my heart, which is which is the the, the message, the core message. I love that. And so if people can get your podcast uh, on iTunes. Is that is that kind of? Yeah, the they can way? get my podcast on iTunes. They can, uh, and I just want to say we launched at number one in the health category. You know, we haven't been able to maintain that spot because we don't have that many shows, but it's pretty cool to see that. So thanks That's to everybody awesome. who supported that. But we're on iTunes, and then the magazine is at DanielVitalis.com. You'll just easily see that in the top menu bar there. That's a little subscribe, and you'll get a free download. Um, you'll get a free uh, password for that. Um, and from there, you can, of course, find Sir Thrival and find a spring, my other projects. I love it. I love it. That's so cool. Well, thank you, Daniel, wow. for your time and energy, Good man. This is so much fun. I appreciate this. So much. Yeah, thank you guys so much for giving me a space to share with the with obviously with a community and a tribe that you guys have gathered together with the work you've done so I appreciate you giving me space and trusting me to, to talk to those people oh, I love it I love it and uh, good luck with your talk out and I think it's Pasadena I think uh, wherever it is yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah. and I could mean, I plug one more thing actually yeah, which is that I do have upcoming an event um, in upstate New York which is um, at Alex Gray's Cosm and a lot of people are familiar with Alex Gray's visionary art um, well I'll be speaking at his place uh, the 12th through the 14th of September um, and that's again an event people can find on my website um, but that's going to be three days of focused time with me so day one will really be laying the foundations day two we're going to be developing a health strategy as individuals so everybody who's with me is going to develop their own personalized health strategy and day three is a day of primal movement where I'm going to teach people movements that can keep their bodies limber and healthy for a lifetime but also help to injury proof them and make them more durable and survivable so uh, so that's going to be a really fun weekend it's the only thing like that I'm doing this year so if you're interested in working with me personally, come out to New York the 12th through the 14th I of love September. That. Yeah, K- you've been okay. Caleb in the chat room wants to know if you have any plans of going to Michigan anytime soon. Oh, okay. <laughs> not in real, yeah, no, not a lot of requests from Michigan. Caleb, but, <laughs> not uh, yet. But, but <laughs> well, you, you have fly one out now. To see me. Yeah, come, yeah, exactly one. Uh, no, Caleb, come see me in New York, man. It'd be great to have you there. Cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, you've been doing a lot of stuff with uh, I think Move Nat or some. Uh, uh, natural movement uh, techniques. Yeah, that, uh, I'm excited in November. I'm going out to study with them, not as a teacher, but just as a student. And, but I've invited a lot of uh, of people from my community to come because they're such a similar community. And if you guys haven't had him on the show, I'd really recommend that, that you talk to Erwin LaCour. He's a really cool guy. Oh, really? We'll write his name down. What's his name? His name is Erwin E. R W A N I think Erwin Lacour, okay. and he is the founder of MoveNat, and he's a guy with a passion for I'd say rewilding, but he comes at it from the movement perspective, where I've come at it from the nutrition perspective. But he teaches um, people how to move like Homo sapiens in nature move, and how to instead of building sort of a robotic workout schedule, instead to actually develop real natural movement and to move in nature again. Yeah, you know what? Uh, a while back, because I follow you on Facebook, and a while back you posted something about that, and so I went over to their website, and I watched a bunch of videos, and I was just fascinated. There's just so the types cool, right? of things yeah, they're doing. It's pretty cool. All right. right. Well, thank you, Daniel. I appreciate it. Just hold on the line there. We're going to close out our live show. So I want to thank everybody for joining us on the live show. Like I said before, we broadcast live four days a week on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific. So uh, next week, we're going to be talking with Ron Becker in studio. He's going to be coming in. We'll be talking about uh, sensory deprivation tanks, so that would be kind of fun. Dr. Allison Adams about the dangers of mercury and her work with the, the uh, dental amalgams. Richard Ostraw, he's going to be coming in from Carnivore to talk about some things related to uh, his business, and so that will be a lot of fun. Four days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific at ExtremeHealthRadio.com forward slash live. You can join the chat room and all that. And I want to thank everybody for being in the chat room today for this show with Daniel Vitalis. So much fun. Thanks, right? guys. It was great Just, to have some new peeps in there, too. Oh, man. Amazing. Amazing, amazing. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. We're going to do a little wrap-up after this, and we'll post this as the podcast later today. We'll do a little wrap-up, Kate and I. But I want to thank all you guys for joining us in the live show. Love you guys, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Look at that. <laughs> all right, Daniel. All right, guys. Take have care. A good one. Thanks a lot. Take care. All right. Bye. Ciao. Well, there you go, Mr. Daniel Vitalis. That was an hour and 33 minutes long. You know? Gosh, of course it was. <laughs> 33 minutes. Know, you got to right? have that thrown in there. I'm surprised it's not 1044. It's 1042, right? <laughs> Shocking, huh? Yeah. That was a pretty interesting idea. I liked, you know what I loved about what he was saying, too, about hmm. all the different workers? Like, what did he say about the manager, the man-ager? Hmm. And I remember a long time ago, I think on one of our episodes, he talked about television being tell-a-vision. 
Like whose vision? Are they telling you, programming you with? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then what do you say? The corporate... Uh, I've heard that one before about the... The, the capitalism? Well, well, the capitalism, yeah, and the corp, corporate or a corporation, like a, a dead entity. Oh, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, it's a dead, essentially a dead, fixed, fictitious entity. I love breaking things down lately. I never really... It's so funny that we live in this culture where we don't think about where our words come from or how mm-hmm. they're used, but I mean, even retiring. You and I had had a whole conversation on yeah, a free-for-all whole, Friday about that. So when he said yeah. that today, I was like, to retire, to What was this something? I was doing dishes down. the other day, and we were talking about this just yesterday. Was it yesterday? And it was something about... The wording of something, how it broke up. Remember that? Mm. It's just yesterday, the day before. I feel like it happens almost, it, it happens weekly for sure, if not daily with us. Or we're like, oh, that's what that means. Yeah, or, that's what that means. Yeah, I don't remember the specific, but it is funny when you start kind of going there, huh? Well, yeah, because uh, the same thing goes with America, which apparently means from, it comes from, if you break it down with Latin and something else, it means A, whenever you put an A in front of, something that means non like anti or non yeah anti or no like agnostic or you know atheist no god so the a represents the negative uh and then mary mare mercy mercy no stand, mercy is latin for this for mercy and then i think ica is some sort of i'm not sure if it's latin or some other derivative uh for the root uh of that name but it's, it stands for no mercy for the sheep no mercy for the sheeple. God bless. No mercy for the sheep. Gosh, what is that? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Every time I hear the word America, since I've known that, I, uh, I look at it a little bit different. A little different. But yeah, I, I, I love, uh, I just love the, the way he came at that. And, um, you know, I just love Daniel and his work. And um, I love the fact that he talked, you know, he said, uh, you know, off the air that he was hoping it wasn't too negative, you know, at the beginning. Oh, I didn't, but, I didn't think so. I think he paid, I didn't yeah. feel that way at all. No, no. I mean... It is true. I mean, this capitalistic system is designed to keep people as slaves and the whole system. I mean, the whole system is designed to keep you in debt. You look at uh, student loan debt, you know, with it's like people have 300,000 to quarter of a million dollars in debt. In student loan student debt. Student loans. That's not counting credit card debt, mortgages, cars, um, Ugh, everything else. You know, man. it's like so the, so the system is flawed, inherently flawed. Um, and so, but that's the system we have right now. And so I love this approach is, okay, this is essentially not something I support, not something I would choose to right. start. But, but how you still gonna... are somewhat in the game. You're playing, you know, you're in the casino playing the card game. Yeah. Like you said, it's... I mean, you got to work with it or work in, you know, if, you know, a lot of people aren't designed or don't want to start their own business. So you got to find a job that stands with your values and you have to find something that can where you can make money that the, the, that the company stands for the same things that you stand for. Um, or if you want to start a business, then you have to um, go at it the right way. You know, you have to, it's weird how in today's culture you have so many people that are so used to free content. And mm. like he said, we can't charge for this show, Mm-mm. you know, cause there's, there's, uh, you know, more and more shows cropping up all the time that, that do exactly what we do. And I think that's awesome. But you know, it wouldn't do me, me or us any favors if we charge no. money for this show. Uh, yeah. When he said that, I was like, you're right. People will go elsewhere. Even if they like you and want to support you, they'll find people. We, we live in a weird society right now. We're free, 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 free. But then when you take it away, people will either be sad or, or they'll find something else. But mm-hmm. you have to, I don't know, I've been listening to so much stuff on the Hay House um, World Summit of 2014 this year, just talking about how when you add value, um, you know, and your heart kind of leads mm-hmm. that, and you serve first, money will follow. So I do agree. It can't be, you can't freak out about people wanting free things because it's just the, just the culture, culture we live in Yeah, and trust that, you know, trust that through that the right people will be reached and be able to support you in your efforts. And yeah, it is a trip though, isn't it? It's so funny, different yeah. than any other. I mean, the, who was it yesterday? Um, oh, it was Mike Adams on our mm-hmm. last show a couple of days ago talking about how just, you know, we're still in the, or maybe it's Daniel Vitas today too, saying we're in like the gold rush era or the Western. Oh yeah. Um, what do you call it? The I, wild west of wild the west. internet. I mean, we've only been around. Mike Adams is saying, you know, it hasn't even been around before 1995 that people really on a massive scale have used it. Right. So, I mean, we are in the beginning stages and in, in this short amount of time, look at what people grow to expect or what, what yeah. happened on the internet to make this all now where you have to have digital products and things are just changing so fast and getting thrown at you. And yeah, it's incredible how, how that works. And it's funny too, because when you talk with people who are, uh, you know, in generations 
um, beyond you and they ask you how your stuff is going, how your radio show is going, or how your business is going, if you have an online business that sells digital products or something like that. Um, it's funny because a lot of those people, be, you know, they kind of say, like, oh, wow, I thought you were, I thought you would be much further along now. Hmm. But really, it's like a long term approach. Well, sometimes we even think that, even though we know. Yeah. We know that it's a long term approach, but still, it's like. You feel like you should be much further along in terms of um, the revenue that it brings in, you know? You feel like, okay, I should be much further along. But in today's world, it's like you have to build a body of work, you know? You have to build and develop a community that trusts you. You have to. Uh, put information out there freely for people. So when we ask people to be on our show, they can look back and say, oh, wow, they've put out 300 shows. They've been around for two years. They've got 300 interviews on their website. Okay, I'll be on their show. Yeah. Because it it lends itself to giving you more credibility uh, with people that trust your opinion about products or people that want to pass your show off to their friends. People can know that they trust you. Hmm. If you've really given out this much free content you know well, I think uh, that's where Dana was talking about when you're led with your heart people see it and they start to hopefully excuse me trust that you are what you're putting forth and yeah yeah you know it's uh, becoming transparent I laughed I laughed inside when he said that <laughs> nowadays people are just looking in your underwear or whatever you said like, <laughs> you're, when you're on social media or when you're yeah. when you're putting yourself out in the in this field of just being basically seen through it's, yeah. it's pretty funny uh, but you know if you're truly being who you're meant to be and what you're if you're really practicing what you're preaching and your goal is to serve and help people and you know people will see that i hope i mean yeah. most people do so yeah yeah most people do good show yeah. i like i like the different take on it today it was pretty yeah it was good huh pretty cool it kind of was similar to mike adams show yesterday cuz we talked about his um you know how he started natural news and and things like that and uh yeah i just think it's i think that if you're inclined entrepreneurially to start something i think there's um, you know, this is a, one of the best times in human history to be able to do that, be able to lay your foundation. I would say that starting to develop yourself, learn, learn, develop a spiritual practice, read a lot of books, listen to a lot of shows like this or other shows, um, immerse yourself in content, whatever it is you want to do, start working on yourself and developing a personality around your passion, start developing a, a, a unique thoughts about um, whatever subject matter you're interested in and start infusing that into your personality and into your life and then start working and start putting into practice some of the principles you're learning and then once you do that that might I mean that you know for me it wasn't like I started doing this with the intention of starting a radio show I just started doing it because I loved the information isn't that funny I just loved it and like Daniel was saying I'd go to the you know library and get Six, like Jim Rohn and Anthony Robbins, Tony Robbins, uh, David Wolf, all these people. And so I didn't do it because, oh, I'm going to start a thing one day. But I did it because I loved it and I made it a part of my life. And then once you have that, then maybe in the meantime, you can start developing a community around it and just do that for a year or two. Yeah. You know, and start really honing in on developing a community and then start developing your own practice in your life. Uh, and then by the time you want to actually launch something and start a website and a business, um, you'll have this. You're in the flow already, yeah. I think. You have got something to offer and you've got a, a community of people that already trust you, you know. And yeah. so I just thought it was brilliant how Daniel started Sir Thrival. Two years of teaching before he even started the company. Yeah, and teaching because he really, he's a good speaker and he knows his strengths. Like he was mm-hmm. talking about, I thought it was really great how he's talking about that strength. What's it called? Strengths Finder. Strength Finder. Yeah, I'm gonna look that one up. I never heard of that. Uh, uh-uh, I would live in. I would love to know myself. <laughs> There's some. If you're interested in, in other books too, I've never read uh, any. Well, actually, I've read one by Gary Vaynerchuk. I forget what it's called. Is that the the Thank You Economy? Oh. I think I read the Thank You Economy. Okay. Um, I found that to be pretty interesting too. So, eh, any books by Gary Vaynerchuk you might want to check out. But um, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Tasty snacks. My heart's leading me to go eat now. Is it? Yeah. What are you going to have? I don't know, but I'm hungry. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. That I'm was gonna, fun, guys. Thanks. I'm going to go join Kate in the kitchen. and Because you can't food. be eating at 2 o'clock I know, anymore. right? <laughs> like right now, today, it's 11 o'clock almost in the morning, and all oh. I've had is water. So that's, We need to take Daniel's advice and make sure that we're taking care of ourselves. Got to have some balance. Hmm.
Okay, so this is episode 299. We'll put the links to everything that we talked about in this show page, extremehealthradio.com forward slash 299. And if you guys can um, check out our sponsors, BioAge Carnivora. If you resonate with their products and what they're up to, uh, you can check them out. We would highly appreciate that. Um, that does help keep the show free for everybody else. Um, also, you can look in our store if you're interested in any cutting edge products. But if you want to just support us in a free way, a great way to do that is to share our show on Facebook. So you can click like on any or share, um, you know, and share this episode or other episodes to your Facebook or Twitter friends. That would be a great way um, to keep everything free for everybody. And um, you don't have to spend any money that way. It's just a nice thing to do and help spread the word. Um, another great thing to do for free if you want, uh, we would be so appreciative. Please, if you can remember to do this, go to iTunes. Sign into your account and do a search for Extreme Health Radio under podcast. Write us a review and um, give us a rating and uh, you know, encourage your friends to do the same thing because that would really help us. Um, apparently, I don't know much about iTunes, but people tell me that uh, the more ratings and review, reviews you have, the better uh, your show shows up when people search for health shows on on iTunes. I don't know how it works, but um, if you could do that, we would be so appreciative. We'd be so, so grateful for that. So that's about it, right? We're so thankful. Everybody who shares and we, yeah, we, we would Just so value it. Yeah. I don't Just know. Without you guys, it wouldn't be it. happening. Yeah. It wouldn't be happening. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for spending some time with us and we will catch you on the next episode. Nice. Hey everybody. This is Josie Justin's mom. Don't tell him, but I know he would absolutely be really happy if you would sign up to his free weekly newsletter. And don't forget to share this with all your friends. This is the buzzing bumblebee signing off. We call her the bee. We call her the bee. The queen bee. That's me. I love it. It's so silly. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to this episode. It's time to go for now, but our mission does not end with this show. Justin and Kate will be back with another interview packed full of ideas, discoveries, and unique ways to regain your health. Head on over to extremehealthradio.com forward slash subscribe and instantly download our free gift too that contains cutting edge strategies to start making healthy lifestyle changes today. No material on this blog is intended to suggest that you should not seek professional medical care. Always work with qualified medical professionals, even if you educate yourself in the field of live food, nutrition, and alternative medicine. I'm not a doctor, nor am I offering readers medical advice of any kind. None of the information offered here.